Hi, this is Jim McKinnell, Director of the Office of Pre-Health Profession Student Development at the University of New Mexico, and this is Planning for a Career in Healthcare. Question of the day. Did you know that there is a dress code in a hospital? Did you ever think about the way that you should present yourself when you walk into an environment where healthcare is being delivered? It's a very, very important question, and it's one of those things that's so fundamental that a lot of times we overlook it, but I never want you to make a misjudgment um, in thinking about the way you want to present yourself when you're going to shadow or when you're going to um, uh, volunteer or when you're going for any kind of clinical experience. I don't want you to make a misjudgment and present yourself in a way that might be perceived by others as inappropriate. So let's talk about sort of the basic thing. What do you have to be aware of? That uh, when, you know, how, how should you look? How should you present yourself when you go into an environment where healthcare is being given? Well, you know, let's start with the most basic aspects of it. And interestingly, I want to share with you, the University of New Mexico Hospital has a dress code. And all the employees and everyone in health in uh, patient care environments are expected to adhere to the guidelines. So some of the th information that I'm going to be sharing with you comes right out of the dress code um, of, from University Hospital. But I think that we can also take many of these guidelines and sort of generalize them. I think that um, they're good things to be aware of anytime you walk into a, um, a healthcare environment. The first thing, it's almost embarrassing to say it, but the first thing is you need to be clean. You know, if you're going to go in, if you're going to if you're going to hang with somebody that is um, is giving health care, if you're going to shadow, if you're going for any kind of if you're working in any way, functioning in any way in a healthcare environment, you need to be clean. So the day that you do that, you need to bathe. That's so that's so ridiculous to have to say that. But let's get real. You need to bathe. Right. You need to wash your hair. You need to be clean now. The other thing that's really, really important, a lot of times we don't think about this, is a lot that in addition to being clean, you need to smell like nothing. That's really, really important because remember, a lot of times if you're going to shadow, for example, you may find yourself in a very small exam room, very close, and there may be a, may be a number of people in that room with you. As with lots of people in a tight enclosed space, temperatures rise odors kind of get magnified. And so, you know, a little bit of a scent can really become very, very strong and very potent. So when I say smell like nothing, if you have a strongly scented deodorant, don't wear that deodorant on the day you go to shadow. Find yourself an unscented deodorant and use that. If you normally wear cologne or perfume or aftershave of any kind, don't wear that on the day that you go into an environment where healthcare is being given. A lot of times people can be very, very sensitive to odors and you don't want to be the source of that odor. All right. So no strongly scented deodorant, no cologne, aftershave, um, a perfume. The other thing is a lot of times people use hand lotions or body lotions and those can sometimes have a very distinct scent. Don't use those on the days that you go into a hospital or healthcare environment. Um, the same thing with if you are a smoker, you shouldn't smoke, but if you are a smoker or if you live with a smoker, you need to be aware that cigarette smoke can permeate clothing and that's also an odor that we don't want to carry in to a healthcare environment with ourselves. So if you, are, if you live with a smoker, before you go to shadow, before you go into the hospital or a clinic, Throw that piece of article, throw that piece of clothing over your head and inhale it through your nose. And if you smell cigarette smoke, you cannot wear that article of clothing into that environment um, the day, as I said, when you go to shadow or when you go to volunteer. Really, really important. So smell like nothing. Women, if you have long hair, you should secure it in the back. All right, so just pull it together and just put a, a scrunchie on it or something, but just pull it back very simply. What we don't want is we don't have we don't want to have long hair that's hanging freely. If you happen to be again in an exam room or near a patient, you lean forward. You don't want your hair falling forward and hitting or touching the patient. That's just something that we don't want to happen. When we think about jewelry. You know, it's like I want I literally I want to go through every little thing, every concern that you might have. So when we think about jewelry, jewelry should be fairly conservative. Um, women and guys for earrings, they should be pretty small, you know, pretty conservative. So if you've got studs, that's fine. Um, if you're going to wear hoops, 
small hoops, not big ones, and we definitely don't want chandeliers going into an exam room. So we want to keep that. We want to keep um, the 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 jewelry that we wear fairly conservative. Um, guys out there, if you have that diamond encrusted dollar sign that you normally throw on your necks on a Friday night. Make sure that that does not go into a patient care area with you. All right, we're going to save that for the weekend. Um, so we're going to keep jewelry very modest. One of the things that's very popular in New Mexico um, are tattoos. So we, uh, there's a lot of ink that we see here. And I think that it's something that's uh, becoming more popular in general with younger, um, with younger people. Now, Ink is great, but the other thing too is that you need to understand many, many healthcare institutions have very definite policies about tattoos. And many of them require that if you do have a tattoo, that it be covered during the time that you're at work taking care of patients. So very, very important. So if you have a tattoo, put it in a place you need to be aware. You need to be aware of the rules of any institution that you're going into, but Hopefully, you have tattoos in a place that can be covered. That might be required of you when you go into patient care areas. The rest of the story is, I also want you to think, if you're thinking about getting a tattoo, think about where you're, having that to, where you, where you're going to have that tattoo placed. You don't want to get a new tattoo in a place that's hard to cover up. One of the areas that I, that's kind of a, it's kind of, Odd. We don't necessarily think of it, but one of the areas I always point out with students is you don't want to get your hands tattooed. It's very, very difficult to cover up a tattoo on your hand. Same thing with your neck and your face. Be very, very hesitant. And I would say at this point, when we're aspiring to careers in healthcare, at this point, I would not compromise um, your success, the possible success of you obtaining your career goals because you have a tattoo on your face that someone may react to or may respond to who could ultimately make a determination of yes, you're in or no, you're not. So I would strongly recommend avoiding getting tattoos in the face, neck, or the hands. The other thing too is that you also need to be aware, have a little bit of idea of what you want to do in the future. I had the experience with one of our current medical students who interestingly got a, um, a tattoo on his chest in memory of his mother who died of complications of breast cancer while he was applying to medical school. That It was a Bible verse which extended from the middle of his chest over the left part of his chest. Interestingly, when he was um, thinking about medical school, he wanted, ultimately as I said, he was accepted, he wanted to go to medical school on an Air Force scholarship. He started in getting information about that scholarship. Well, it turns out that one of the dress uniforms of the Air Force is an open collared shirt. And it turned out that with the placement of his tattoo on his chest, that tattoo extended into an area that would be exposed if he had an open collared shirt on. And because of that, he was not, he was disqualified from applying for an Air Force scholarship. So in that situation, that tattoo potentially cost him $150,000. Basically, four years of medical school tuition, he was not eligible for that from the Air Force because of that tattoo. So I want you to understand that little things that we think are insignificant can sometimes have big ramifications. In general, as far as clothing goes, I think what you want to do is think about dressing kind of in what we come to have called business casual. So guys, you should have an iron, you should have a collared shirt on, either a collared shirt like this that, you know, is ironed or, you know, a tennis shirt if you're in a more informal environment with um, still have a collar on it. Guys, avoid t-shirts. Women, we want to sort of dress conservatively. We want to make sure that we don't wear anything that's, that's um, strapless or that has spaghetti straps on it, no tube tops, nothing. We don't want to have any possibility of a wardrobe malfunction. In other words, when you're in an environment, you're going to be around um, around people that you may not be familiar with. Sometimes you may be around children. Children grab things and pull. So if that happens, we don't want a child to have the opportunity to sort of, as I said, cause a wardrobe malfunction. So we want to be very, very clear about that. We also want to make sure that that appearance is conservative, right? We don't want to look like we're going out on Friday night. All right, so clothing should be conservative. It should not be see-through at all. Um, no underwear should be visible. No skin between your neck and your knees should be visible. So in other words, no exposed midriffs for men or for women. Guys, on your pants, 
pull them up. You know, I know that a style right now is kind of low riders to sort of have the pants lower. Not when you're in the hospital. When you're in the hospital, pull up your pants, secure your belt around your waist. All right, so you want to look professional. All right, no jeans. Don't wear jeans when you go into the hospital. Get a pair of khakis. It doesn't have to be expensive pants. They don't have to be fancy, but do not wear jeans. All right, you want to wear, have a khaki pant that's got a crease in it, something like that, so that we look professional. We want to look professional when we go in to the hospital. Footwear is critical. You cannot wear sandals and you cannot wear open-toed shoes. So no sandals, no flip-flops, no open-toed shoes. Your toes have to be covered. And that's pretty much a universal rule in all healthcare facilities. Why? It's because there are needles in healthcare in the, that are used in those environments and sometimes people drop those. So if, so if you happen to be standing next to someone who had a needle in their hand, they dropped it, you don't want that needle going into your foot. All right, so we're not going to have our feet exposed. We're going to have closed-toed shoes on. The other thing as far as shoes goes, again, it goes along with that professional appearance that I really want you to be aware of. I would avoid sneakers or trainers of any kind. I think that you need to have on a pair of leather shoes. All right, so you really want to look pulled together. You want to look like you belong in that environment. If you look like you belong in the environment, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel like you belong there. The people that you're working with, those people that are supervising you, they're going to feel better about having you with them because you look like you belong with them. You're a reflection of them and you, and you look the part. And as I mentioned before, most important, when you walk into a room and there's a patient there, they're going to look at you. And because of the way you've dressed, because of the way you've presented yourself, they're going to feel comfortable having you in the room with them. Then that's, as I said, the most critical part of it. Oh, one last thing I just thought of, the three big don'ts. Hats do not go into any area where there are patients. You take a hat off. If you have sunglasses, take your sunglasses off. Don't take them into an area where there's a patient. You don't want sunglasses there. So in other words, they don't come off your head and, hang, and get hung over your shirt. We're not going to do that with sunglasses. So hats get left in another room. Sunglasses get left in another room. Earbuds get left in another room. Do not take earbuds into any place where you're going to be with a patient. All right, that's just, those are, those are things that we don't want. In general, and especially if you're shadowing, make sure that if you go into a patient room with a provider and you're there to observe that interaction, make sure that your phone is either off or on silent. You don't want your phone or noise coming from your phone in any way interfering with the, the, that, that conversation, the communication that's happening between a provider and a patient. All right, so make sure that your phone is either off or silent. You, we all know that vibrate, you know, when we put our phones on vibrate, yeah, it doesn't ring, but it still makes a noise. So not on vibrate, off or silent. These are just a few guidelines. Um, I hope they're helpful uh, for you because I do, I, it's really, really important that you're in these environments. You need to be in environments where care, where you need to be in those environments where patient care is being given. And I want you, I want you to feel comfortable and I want people who are there with you to also feel comfortable having you with them um, there in the room. I think that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in. Again, this is Jim McKinnell, Director of the Office of Pre-Health Profession Student Development at the University of New Mexico. Our station, the, the, the channel here, Planning for a Career in Healthcare. Thanks for checking us out.